So what is it? It is hard to pronounce. Uh, I went out and looked at the dictionaries. I listened to the audios. There's three normal pronunciations, but dyscalculia is probably the one that is winning out. I've called it dyscalculia. Uh, there is another one that is sort of a combination that I have a hard time on. So it is a hard word to pronounce, but dyscalculia appears to be the prevalent one. It is pretty much unknown as compared to dyslexia. Uh, educators probably know more. If I'm talking to parents, it is pretty much unheard of. Cognitive neuroscientists, especially those that are looking at uh, what's going on in the brain from a learning standpoint, they're the ones that know about it and we have been picking their brains to bring this to you. It was originally labeled a math learning disability, inaccurately math dyslexia, but I think it's coming into its own because the research has picked up heavily just in the last five to seven years. This surprised me. The estimation is that it is three to 6% of our population. That's not of the SPED population, but of the general population. So in a typical classroom of 25, you know, maybe 24 students, you're looking at potentially one to two students who are in your classroom that could be diagnosed with this. This doesn't mean, but they may very well be adapting and doing just well, so they're invisible, or they may not. They may be the student that is always struggling, and you'll see, as Randy talks, what some of those indicators are. It does have a high comorbidity comorbidity with other disabilities, especially with dyslexia. It's the estimate is sort of in that 35 to up to maybe 49, 50% of students with dyslexia also evidence uh, dyscalculia. So think of word problems. Um, and we're actually going to touch on that in October and go deep into what it means for word problems and dyscalculia and dyslexia will play into that. IDEA, it is a specific part of specific learning disabilities. So it is one of, it falls under the 13 categories. So our school psychologists that we rely on for identification and getting students into the support process, they're able to help us with that. It does affect boys and girls equally from what we can tell from the research. And it is persistent over the years. Uh, it does not go away. It is genetic. It is oftentimes familial and passed on. 